Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial in which we're going to be looking at how we can use Blender in collaboration with Motion. And we're going to be looking at creating this particular scene of this collapsing box. And in Motion, we're going to be adding a floor and some lighting and some text and so on. So first of all, let's install the two scripts that we're going to be using to export First of all, the scene to motion. And the second is a very useful USDZ exporter. So you can get directly from Blender into motion uh, via USDZ. So in order to install these scripts, we're going to come to Edit and Preferences. And it brings up the Blender preferences that look like this. And we need to look in this list for the add-ons. And then we're going to click on the Install button here. And then we're going to navigate to where we've downloaded these two scripts. Now I'm going to give you the links to these and uh, you can grab them for yourself. So the first one we're going to install is this thing called motion camera tracking, and that's going to give us the export scene to motion. So click on that, click on the install add on button to a couple of seconds, and then this will come up and we need to check this box here. So now that's installed and then we can install another one. So let's click on the install button and we need to install this other one called IO Scene USDZ. So this is the USDZ exporter. Now, if for some reason your browser has unzipped the zip, you need to rezip it or uh, override the, the unzip function in your browser because what this install is looking for is the zip. So let's click on that install add-on. Again, we need to check that checkbox like that, and we're good to go. So now if we come to our file export menu, down at the bottom here, you'll see the first one we've added, which is the Apple Motion exporter. And at the bottom there is that new USDZ exporter, which is very useful. So let's get started on the main project. So first of all, let's build our collapsing box. Now I'm starting in a brand new scene which has the camera and the light and the default cube in it. And often you're, you're told to delete the camera and the light and the cube. In this case, we need to keep the camera and the light because they're required for the uh, export uh, to motion. This one here requires a, there, there to be a camera and a light in the scene, otherwise it can fail. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take this default cube, show you the overhead view by hitting seven, and then hit the period on the number pad to zoom it up. And then I'm just going to scale it on X. So S for scale, X for the X axis, 0 0.05 for the value and enter. And then I'm going to move it over on X. So G for the move tool, X for the axis, negative 0.95 for the direction and enter. So now we've got one face of our cube over there and I'm just going to do a little bit of an edit on it. So I'm going to come over to edit mode, going to make sure I've got edit faces selected. I'm going to select this face, this inner face here, and I'm just going to scale it again. S for the scale tool, 0.9 is the value and enter. And now you see we've got this sort of chamfered box and that's going to be a little bit more realistic when we actually assemble the whole thing. So let's switch back to object mode. The next thing I want to do is I want to set the origin to the cursor. So you see the origin here is that little dot and it's centered in the box. I actually want to set it to the 3D cursor. So right click, set origin to 3D cursor. And now the origin is over there. And now what we can do is we can duplicate this box, so Shift D, Enter. And will it still select it? We're going to rotate it through Y. So R for the rotation tool, Y for the axis, 180 for the value, and Enter. And you can see we've now mirrored it over there on the other side. So then I'm going to duplicate both these boxes by dragging around them there like that. So we've got them both selected, and then Shift D, Enter. So with both those boxes still selected, we're going to rotate them on the Z axis. So R, Z, 90 for the amount and enter. And now you see we've got another set of faces and with those selected, Shift D, 
Enter to duplicate those. And one final rotation, R for the rotation tool, X for the axis, 90 for the amount, and Enter. And now we've got our complete box. So now we've got all our cubes created. I'm going to select them all here and I want to reset their origin. So right click and origin to geometry. And now you'll see they've got a little dot on the center of each one. It just makes it collapse a little bit better when their origin is, has been reset like that. So then we need to do this slightly tiresome thing of just going through and renaming all the faces that we've created. So I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. Select the front, rename it as front. So then just go all the way around the cube, selecting each vertical face and renaming it accordingly. And finally, renaming the top and the base. So there you go. I've whizzed through and done all of those. And there's just one more thing I need to do before we set up the physics, and that's just to move them up so they're sitting at zero on the baseline. So select all of the cubes and then G for the move tool, Z for the axis, one for the value. And now we're sitting on the, the floor like so. So then what we can do is we can select the front over here and we can come to the physics. So selecting physics properties here and then from the selection, we're going to choose a rigid body and the type we want is active. So that's fine. The only thing I want to do is I want to come into the sensitivity here and I want to enable collision margin and set that margin to zero. Just with this particular simulation, if you don't do that, you get a little bit of sort of intersection. So it's a little bit of detail that we need to address. So we've still got that front selected. I'm going to draw around all the other faces, like so. You can see they're now all selected, but the front is the active one. And then I can come to Object and down to Rigid Body here. And what I can do is copy from Active. And now all of these have got that same rigid body applied. So now I want you to look at what happens if we actually press play. But notice we're in layout mode here, which gives us these playback controls. So if we press play, the entire cube just falls down like that. And that's because of the rigid body of physics that's been applied to it. But obviously we want it to fall apart. And to do that, we are going to need a floor. So what we can do is come to add mesh plane. And then with the plane still selected, hit S, 5 and Enter. And that's made us a nice wide floor. And now if we try to play, it goes through the floor. And the reason for that is we need to apply a different rigid body physics to this plane. So come over to the rigid body. And previously we were using active, but the floor doesn't want to move. It wants to be passive. So now let's have a look. There you go. The cube falls apart and very much kind of real world physics there. So no doubt you'll want to play around with some other physics properties. And let's just do that very quickly. Now I'm going to hide the plane so it's a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to select the front, come back to physics properties, this one here. And I'm going to open up surface response and I'm going to reduce the friction down to 0.2 and crank the bounciness up to one. And then just as before, I'm going to draw around all the other faces. Again, the front is the active one and I can come to object and again, rigid body and copy from active. I'll just turn the plane back on again so we can see the result. And you'll see that it's a little bit more active because we've just adjusted those those factors there, the surface response factors. And you can obviously also adjust the mass and so on. But I think we'll leave it at that and move on to looking at how to export this all for motion. So the first thing we need to take care of is at the moment our simulation is kind of live and it's not yet baked into the animation of the objects. So I'm going to come back to the first frame. And again, I'm just going to turn off the the plane just to make life a little bit easier. I'm going to make sure everything is selected again, like so. And this time I'm going to come to object and rigid body and bake to keyframes, this one down here. 
So we've got a range of 250 frames. That's probably enough for this purpose. So let's hit OK. And you'll see that now that we've got a lot of little keyframes down here. And these, these have now been baked into each of the, uh, the, the animated objects. So let me turn the plane back on again. And let's just check that it's all working as it should. So there you go. That's now baked in. But there is just one final little detail that we need to take care of. If you look down here at the scale, uh, because we started off with a scaled cube, we've actually got a, a an X scale of uh, 0 0.05. And that's going to make a mess of things when, when we try to work in motion. So what we'll actually need to do, again, I'll just hide the plane so I make it obvious what we're doing here, is select all the cubes, all the faces of the cubes, and control A in the viewport to bring up this menu here. And we're going to apply scale like so. And now if you look over, you'll see that that scale for all of these faces has been set to one for all the values. So we're, we're good to go now. So the nice thing about this USDZ exporter here that we're going to be using is that we can select which objects we want to export. So if we don't actually want to export the plane, and in this instance, let's not bother exporting the plane because we're going to make our own in motion, we can again just select all those faces of the box. We're going to come to File, Export and USDZ, and we're going to navigate to the folder that we want to save it to. And I've called it Breakable Cube. You notice that we have some options here. The, the one thing we want to make sure is turned on is animations. We're not worried about materials because we haven't really set any up and we're not worried about any of this either. We're just going to import, export a basic USDZ, but we could have set up materials and textures and, and, and they come through pretty nicely. So let's just export that. And then what we can do is we can export the entire scene as a motion project. So if we come to File, and export, and then we choose the other script, so the Apple Motion script. Again, let's navigate to where we want it. You'll see that it's it's creating a .motn, so in other words, it's creating a motion project. And this one is very simple, there aren't any options. We literally just export it, and everything in our scene is going to turn up in the exported motion project. So here we are in motion, and I've opened up that project that we've literally just exported, breakablecube.motn. And it looks like this. It's got the blender camera and light. It's got the background plane and it's got all the faces of the cube. And if we actually look at the faces of the cube, you can see that they're actually animated. And this is going to prove to be very useful. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the USDZ. So let's click on import. Let's grab the USDZ and import it. Now it's annoyingly put it into a group of its own choosing. So let's just drag it out to the top there into its own group. And let's come over to properties. Let's reset everything there. And let's come back to the 3G object menu. And here under unit size, let's choose original. And now if we have a look, you'll see that we've actually got that animation that we created using physics in Blender. So the next thing we can do is come to that plane group and come over to the library generators. So because I want to show you something, I'm going to use the checkerboard and apply it to that plane group. And you can see that it's actually now it's perfectly aligned with the ground plane that we created in, in Blender. And that's because of the way this plane has come through. And you'll see if I open up the rotation, it's got a rotation of 90 degrees. What it's also got is that scale of 500%. You remember when we brought in our plane, we scaled it to 500%. And I didn't apply that scale to the, the plane. And it, this has come through. And that's why we've got this soft uh, checkerboard, because it's just too big. So actually what I need to do is just scale it down and you can see it sort of sharpens itself back up again. But that's why it's important to, to bake in the any scale uh, factors that you've got. And if we hadn't done that with the, with the faces of the cube, it would be very difficult. So what we've got here is kind of the default lighting. But actually, I'm going to come over to the breakable cube. 
and reveal its environment lighting. And let's turn that down to say something like 10%. And then what we can do is add a light of our own. So add object light, and I just need to move it out here, something like that. So now we've got the one light illuminating the whole scene, and that's looking better. So finally, I want to add some text to this front face here so that it falls down with that face. So I'm going to first of all just move that group, the front group, up to the top of the project there. So I can't remember how to do that. Uh, object uh, bring to front. It's that shortcut there. So then I'm going to select the text tool and I'm going to type the word box. Very annoyingly, it's decided to make a new group for me. So I'm going to drag it out of that new group into front, kill, kill that new group, we don't need it. And what I need to do is come over and reset its transform, all of it, so like that. And you'll notice the rotation is a little bit funky. And that's because of the different coordinate system that the Blender is using. So first of all, we need an X rotation of 180 and then 90 for both X and Y, and then we're good. The text needs to be centered like that. We can perhaps bring it up in size a little bit like so, and we can maybe just change its color a little bit. And then you'll see that it falls perfectly with that, that face. It's, it's absolutely completely locked. And that's because that front group is completely mimicking the movement of that 3D object. Now, as we get to this point, it all starts to go wrong because motion doesn't really have any sense of true 3D depth when it comes to 3D objects. So what we we'll need to do is, is simply just at this point, just cut the text short. So add that frame there, it's 32. I'm going to hit O on the keyboard. And then the whole thing is going to look plausible because that text sort of disappears underneath the face of the box there. So there you go. So I hope that's given you quite a few tricks that you can use. One interesting thing I would point out is you can actually use motion blur. Uh, and you'll see that that actually, the motion blur is actually being applied to those 3D objects, which is really rather nice. So loads you can do once you've got your scene into motion. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you have a lot of fun with Blender physics and I hope to see you again next time.